Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you are doing well. Let's talk a little bit of a shop on the review front. Give some thoughts and opinions, uh, not on a record or a song or anything like that, but just on the reviewing process, the concept of reviewing and critiquing in general. Because uh, somebody who is in this lane, a movie reviewer, uh, who I hold in high regard, uh, Adam, or Your Movie Sucks, uh, has gone to Twitter a little while ago, I'm kind of catching up with this, uh, to post a comment talking about uh, his process or his mindset when reviewing or still covering movies that uh, he has not finished all the way through, which uh, for me personally is kind of an interesting angle because uh, every album that I review every album that I talk about on my main channel. I finish it. There are some records that I may not go all the way through with like, you know, stuff in the Why You Know Review series. When it comes to a main review, the sort of stuff that I will focus on for an entire video, like I, I finish that shit. I got to finish that shit, at, at least in my own head. That's how I feel. Uh, but I think it would be interesting here to go over Adam's reasoning. Quickly also mention our sponsor, good people over at The Ridge, still making these awesome, nifty, nifty. fantastic, sleek, metal plated wallets that fit nicely in that front pocket. Pick up one for yourself today. Link down below, promo code MELON, 10% off your order. That's all you gotta know. Let's dive into this comment and I will give my thoughts on each point and then, you know, sort of sum things up toward the end for you guys. If I finished every uninteresting film, I wouldn't have had time for many interesting films. My favorite movie of 2021, listening to Kenny G, uh, was one that I added to my TIFF schedule because I had extra time after skipping through Dashcam and Lakewood. Now, I I will say personally, I don't watch many movies. I really truly do not. <laughs> if you ask me to give you a top 10 list of like the best movies of last year, I, I could probably only tell you three because maybe last year I watched three movies. <laughs> It really is that bad. Uh, but with that being said, one of the few movies I did see from last year, one of the few is actually that listening to Kenny G documentary. And it's very funny to me that that is Adam's favorite movie of last year. It is a very good documentary. I've seen quite a few music docs over my lifetime, I will say that. And the Kenny G one was very well done. It was very good. I mean, maybe a little heavy-handed on the way some people would obsess over how he's not jazz and so on and so forth, but it was a very well-rounded picture of the man and got to the heart of what makes him tick in so many ways and, and also exposed some stuff about him that maybe a little shallow and a little vapid, but it, 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 no, nothing personally against the guy. He's still a very unique and interesting figure. I haven't seen those other two films that Adam kind of skipped out on, but I do find it very funny that that's uh, his favorite. Number two, I say several times in this video that the rating I give those movies is from what I've seen of it, not what I haven't seen from it. It would be an issue if I were ever misleading people into thinking I had watched the entirety of a film when I hadn't, but I don't do that. If you don't feel as though my review is as legitimate because of this, then you can use that information to decide whether or not to check out the film and judge it for yourself. I mean, there is part of me that says like, well, I guess as, as long as you're honest about that being a part of your process and you let people know, then as you say, they can kind of just take that information and uh, decide for themselves. Uh, this is also not completely unheard of in the movie criticism realm, as there are quite a few movies that guys like Roger Ebert literally walked out on and, you know, still ended up talking about. Uh, and, you know, just like obviously the film being uh, so bad that you couldn't stand to sit through it was a uh, part of the, the coverage. But yeah, I guess I'll say from my own personal standpoint, though, personally, just as a music fan, a consumer of media, even with um, albums traditionally not being as long as movies are, though when it comes to an album review, even like a half an hour album, I will end up listening to that record like several times over. So, you know, usually the time that would be spent watching a movie is filled up and more uh, when it comes to just kind of consuming a record. If I was going to do a formal, formal review on a record on my main YouTube channel, I, I don't think I couldn't not finish the album because I, I feel like I'm too much of a completist. I have to know what's at the end. I have to know if it gets better or if it does something crazy or if it just kind of ends up sucking the same exact way <laughs> all the way through. If it's bad, I want to know how bad it's going to be. You know, if I didn't finish things that I knew from the outset were either not going to be good or were just like completely awful uh, starting from like, you know, uh, frame one, um, I, I would have never known the magic of having experienced Corey Feldman's Angelic to the Core uh, from beginning to end. <laughs> 
If I've dedicated myself to the idea of reviewing an album to the point where I am undoubtedly going to make a video about this record, like I have to know at least, at least in a cursory way from front to back what the record does, you know, because if miraculously the whole thing sucks, but maybe there are three amazing tracks on the very end. I want to hear those tracks. I mean, I will say shout out to my editor, Austin, who is uh, pulling this video together that you are watching. Uh, a lot of the worst albums that I end up having to listen to week to week, knowing that I'm going to end up reviewing them, uh, we will often listen to them together, especially if it's a bad album. It's always nice to have somebody else there to kind of... <laughs> Uh, sort of validate the experience that you're having with the uh, the record so you feel like less alone and, and honestly less likely to just kind of ditch on it because it stinks. But again, simultaneously to point number one, uh, there are lots of records all the time that I have to, you know, I'm forced to, honestly, uh, kind of give a, a very surface level listen just to kind of see if I'm, I'm into the vibe, I'm into the idea, uh, because I can't just kind of listen to an album a million times over uh, that I know I'm not going to enjoy uh, for a review that's not going to happen when there are so many other records out there that I could be devoting my time to that I enjoy more, that I would much rather share with you guys. So I do understand the push and pull that Adam is talking about here in terms of like every album that you listen to is another album that you don't have the time to listen to, one of which could have ended up being like one of your favorites or your favorite of the year. And, and you know, that time is valuable. You have to kind of find uh, that balance between engaging diving into what your subject matter is, but also being able to have enough freedom to jump from thing to thing to thing so you can effectively curate. Three, these reviews are to communicate my experience with the film. If I gave up on the film before it's finished, that's part of my experience with the film. That is valuable to communicate. That is true. There are other annoying people who show up in this conversation whenever it takes place saying things like the only way he could dislike this film is if he hadn't finished it. I'd like to address how nonsensical that is. Your personal taste in movies is not an objective measurement uh, for all others to follow. Please grow up and realize that other people with different brains exist. If the quality and pacing of a film uh, pick up at the end, then great but it's up to the first half of the film to get us there. Next time someone says they don't like pickles, I'll tell them <laughs> they can't say that unless they finish the whole jar. <laughs> Just in case one of the pickles near the bottom was secretly injected with uh, the flavor of cream fresh. Sometimes if a review for a record is very negative and that record I think you know particularly stinks, it can be easy for me to get through a review mostly focusing on the two to three elements that maybe consistently ruin it over and over and over, as opposed to having to, you know, go over the overall progression and every single narrative detail and stuff like that, you know, going on in a story on film that is happening in front of me. You know, th those processes can be very different. And because they're so different, I could understand the concept of whether it be a movie reviewer or, or a music reviewer, depending on how you approach things. Like, yeah, the first half of this thing sucked so badly and was so awful or so predictable that it made the second half almost just like not even worth it. There are some records that in fact, after having listened to them more than halfway through and maybe not being crazy about my experience up until that point, they did definitely grow on me. And you know, the first half of the record uh, did end up appealing to me. Now, I'm not trying to say that that necessarily translates over into film and movies uh, every time. I think kind of presuming that to be a one-to-one -one scenario is a little problematic, especially since on most albums, uh, we're talking about everything being chunked out in these little tiny song-shaped pieces. Uh, whereas like, you know, a movie, pretty much every movie that you're seeing is a part of an overarching narrative. Whereas like, regardless of how bad an album is, if a particular song on it is good, I can at least in a review, you know, just be like, hey, this one particular song is great. Uh, I can listen to it just on its own at any time. And it was far superior to everything else on the record for X, Y, and Z reason. With a movie, there's not quite as much value gleaned out of watching an entire 90 or two hour film just for maybe one or two scenes that were above average or particularly good out of the whole thing. And I don't even know if like conveying that information to the audience is even all that valuable. I imagine most viewers kind of want to know big picture. What 
what about the film works and what about the film doesn't. Uh, not like, oh, well, hey, this whole thing was shit, but this one scene, ha, it was so lit. So yeah, I think I'm going to leave it there. Those are my thoughts. Those are my opinions. That's my passion. Shout out to uh, Adam and uh, uh, shout out to this post and a shout out to you for watching. You're the best. Love you. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, your movie sucks uh, forever. <laughs>